Good evening, everyone. My name is Amara Ifeji. I'm a National Geographic Young Explorer of 2020 and a 2020 recipient of the Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare Foundation Healthy Food Champion Award. Tonight's keynote speaker is Joel Clement. Joel is a PhD biologist who was serving as a senior executive service level advisor to the Secretary of the Interior on the adverse impacts of climate change when, in the summer of 2017, he was arbitrarily reassigned to the office that collects and processes oil and gas royalty payments as an act of retaliation by then Secretary Ryan Zinke. Although dozens of other SES level employees were similarly notified, Joel was the only one to hire counsel and blow the whistle. He placed an op-ed in the Washington Post in June 2017 that was a rebuke of Secretary Zinke's action and promptly filled a whistleblower complaint with the Office of Special Counsel. Clement has become a convincing spokesperson for adherence to scientific integrity in climate science. He is a recipient of the 2017 Joe A. Calloway Award for Civic Courage from the Shafiq Nader Trust for the Community Interest. It's my honor to welcome to the stage, Joel Clement. Well, my goodness, thank you so much, Amar, for that kind introduction uh, and for giving me a PhD. Um, I'll take it. Uh, greetings from the ancestral home of the Wabanaki people, the people of the dawn uh, here in Wayne, Maine. And thank you to the Wabanaki people for their stewardship of these lands since time immemorial. If there's one thing that gives me strength uh, that renews my spirit when it flags, it's this little plot of land here in Maine. And I try to steward it thoughtfully as generations of Wabanaki did before the white man came along. Uh, I'm delighted uh, to be here to kick things off for the 20, 2021 Maine Sustainability Awards because these amazing awardees, including Amara from last year, uh, are being honored because they feel the same way about Maine's lands, waters, and people. I'm in the virtual company uh, of Kindred Spirits and this event is taking place at an auspicious time. Uh, as really important steps are being taken this week to address the many crises we face uh, in Maine and around the world, whether it be climate change uh, crisis, social justice, public health, uh, or the biodiversity crisis. So uh, with your indulgence and in the interest of placing this event in the course of history, I'd like to describe uh, what this week has wrought. Uh, first, uh, apologies if my audio isn't great, so I'm gonna try and speak slowly and, and uh, carefully. Um, I want to describe what this week has wrought. Uh, Maine Climate Council, for one, they've mapped out a roadmap for achieving Maine's ambitious and necessary climate change goals, uh, from addressing our emissions to supporting frontline communities. And today, Governor Mills joined 11 other governors to ask the federal government to ban the sale of CO2 emitting cars and trucks by 2035 and heavy duty rigs by 2045. Uh, this is an essential step to cutting national emissions and somehow it caught me by surprise that it's now in the public discourse. So a momentous day. Uh, tomorrow and Friday, the Biden administration is hosting a climate summit uh, that will put the U.S. back on the climate action map after the dismal denial and delay of the Trump administration. And the Biden team's coming in hot. They're in the process of making commitments for this week's climate summit that are far and away the most ambitious and comprehensive goals we've seen. So truly this administration is pushing the envelope in a way I never expected to see happen in DC. Now today is also a somber uh, but hopeful day as we process yesterday's guilty verdict and the George Floyd murder. While this verdict gave us some hope that justice may one day be served, it feels like the first of many important steps necessary to overcome the social justice crisis in our nation. As a climate hawk, I know that winning the climate change fight will require equity and empathy, no justice, no peace, no future. Uh, there was another important milestone this week as we all grow so damn tired of the isolation and we just wanna see the smiles around us instead of masks at a distance. Every adult in the US can now sign up for a vaccine. 
underserved communities still struggle to get the shots. Developing countries are still without aid. And frustratingly, a, a lot of people are declining to get the shot and protect the people around them. But this is still a pretty remarkable thing. In an incredibly short time, and despite a neglectful uh, President Trump in 2020, scientists created a vaccine and it was rolled out across the country. These are tough times, but think about that, what, what that means. That our old friend science is once again bailing us out and free socialized medicine is bringing us the goods. Imagine if that could be the norm after the pandemic. <clears throat> now there's another crisis that gets a bit lost in all the talk of climate action and that's the biodiversity crisis. We're losing species at such a rate around the world that it's changing the way ecosystems function, the way plants are pollinated, the way we eat, but it's also altering things as simple or mundane as the sounds we hear when we wake up in the morning. Because I know how fast we're losing migratory birds, I'm on edge this time of year. When I don't see birds, I wonder if this is the year they won't come. Now, maybe I'm a little gloomy about this. I, I'm a sensitive guy, but this morning, when the first big mixed flock of warblers woke me up and I ran outside with the binoculars, I experienced a renewal of faith. So it's been a week. And these reminders of what's possible give me hope that we can actually tackle this nasty climate change problem. The scientific consensus is that climate change threatens catastrophic impacts if we don't limit warning warming to a degree and a half Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The IPCC tells us that to have a fighting chance of doing so, we have to cut global emissions approximately in half this decade and then continue to drive them down to net zero by mid-century. Until this week, I was having a hard time imagining how we could do this. I've been writing articles about various different pieces of the puzzle how the U.S. Interior Department must transform, how we must elevate indigenous knowledge holders in the Arctic and elsewhere, uh, how the new administration must confront the politically powerful fossil fuel industries, and how governments must support frontline communities who, as always, uh, suffer the greatest from, from threats like this. And this is the work in the trenches uh, that needs to happen, but the necessary just didn't seem to add up to the possible to me. But at today, as I was awoken by that flock of yellow rumped warblers, as, as science delivered that second vaccine shot into my arm, as the nation imagined a, a social justice future, and as the Biden administration teased that it intends to announce a goal of cutting our national emissions in half by the end of this decade, just as the experts say we must, I felt the world expanding uh, just a bit. These developments this week reminded me that nothing stays the same forever. And if things are going to change, why not do everything we can to make sure that change is in the right direction? And this is the, the message that tonight's honorees, they don't need to hear. They've shown us how to do it. They've shown us that individual action makes a difference at a time when I think a lot of people are feeling powerless. Now, each one deserves the award because of their remarkable dedication and accomplishments, but also because they are our guides, our energetic innovators, our change makers. They're carrying the lantern uh, through what sometimes feels like a very dark night. So for this, I, I thank each of them from the bottom of my heart. And, and I ask that all of you consider your role as we transform our energy economy and address the biodiversity crisis, erase inequity, and provide for the most vulnerable. This is what public service looks like. And I always find a way to sneak this into my talks. We need more of you in public service. It doesn't have to be the federal or state government, although I will attest to the fact that government jobs can be an incredible way uh, to bring policy change. But we all do have a role to play. Tonight's awardees have shown us how it can happen at the local level or more broadly, uh, but each of us can pitch in. Some of you may have chosen or are already considering federal service. And may I note that my old agency, the Department of the Interior right now, some 50% of the workforce is retirement eligible. Those numbers may have gone up in the last couple of years. Uh, well, they ne necessarily would have. And so it's getting high, which is generally true across much of the federal government. So there's an opportunity now to infuse uh, the federal government with innovative new ideas formed during a time of transformation, to reinvent the way we serve taxpayers and the lands and waters that we depend on. For that, we need our youth innovators uh, to consider federal service. And this is also a time of invigorating opportunities in state government. Leaders like Governor Mills are leaning in on climate action and working with partners 
both in the public and private sector to develop a vision of the future that we can all live with. And then there's your town or neighborhood. Rural Maine in particular could use a lift right now. We Mainers, with some exceptions, uh, are traditionally quite reserved. But during difficult times or times of change, we need positive voices of change to rise above the chorus of hate and anger that fills the void from the margins when regular folks don't step up. So consider running for a town or county office, attending public meetings. These days, they seem to be a little overwhelmed by very negative, selfish people. It's hard to do, it takes energy, but every now and then you remember why you do it, you feel change happen and you're lifted into the clouds by the possible. So this week I had my reminders. The honorees tonight, they're your reminders. So let's take inspiration from them. Let's see if we can turn the necessary into the possible. So thanks again for inviting me to speak with you tonight and congratulations to tonight's dedicated honorees. I'm very impressed, proud of them. Thanks very much.